to a quick tutorial on how to use the high pass filter for sharpening your images. I never liked the unsharp mask feature in Photoshop. Back when I started working with elements, I just found it very confusing with all the different sliders to really get a result that I liked. And I'm sure with practice, I could have gotten better. But a few years after struggling with that, um, I had read somewhere this tutorial on using the high pass filter, and I think it's so much better. And I used to teach this in my elements classes back when I did adult ed teaching. So what we need to do is um, have all of our, everything we've done to our image in one layer. So if you've got like a whole bunch of layers and you've done adjustments, um, let's say we, we add a couple of adjustment layers. I'm not going to change anything. We'll just leave them there. You can either flatten the layer, which isn't always the best thing because, as you know, I like to work with layers and keep my layers so I can come back to them. Um, however, for this, you're going to be doing this as the last step to your image. So if you wanted to save it first as your TIFF image, unsharpened, and then you can flatten it and do your sharpening. Or, as I've demonstrated in some of my webinars, you could create a merged layer that combines all of the layers in your project into one layer without flattening it. Um, and the way you would do that is the keyboard shortcut on a PC is Control, Alt, Shift, and the letter E. And that creates this merged layer. And I usually label that as merged so I know why that layer is there and what it is. Um, if you're on a Mac, that would be Command Option Shift E. So now we have our merged layer. We do want to duplicate this because we need a second layer for this filter to work. So I'm going to do a Control J, duplicate my layer, and then you're going to come up to the filter menu, go to Other, and go to High Pass. And when it first opens, you're going to get this weird looking gray screen. And that's okay, don't panic, because this is how we're going to create the illusion of the sharpening in our image. So what you want to do is you only have one slider to deal with here and you want to move this so that you just start seeing the outlines and details in your image because that's where this effect is going to be applied. So you don't want to go too far because then you're going to get that really kind of over sharpened crunchy kind of look that we don't want to do. So you want to just start really seeing some of the good detail in there. I'm going to go a little bit higher than normal just so it will show up good on the um, you know, video here. Normally I would probably do for this image maybe about, probably about around there, about 2.8. So we're going to push that just a couple points more. I find the, the zoom feature here not to be the most helpful. I usually just like to look at the whole image to see what I want. So once we have that, we'll say, okay. Now the way we make this work is just like if we were working with a texture, we're going to change the blending mode of this layer to hard light. And I'm gonna zoom in so you can see the effect. We'll start with the house. So if I turn it off, that's the before. You can see it's got a little softness to it. And with our filter on it, you can see all of these lines in the roof and then the boards really start to pop. If we come over to the trees and the cows, again, this is the after, there's the before. You can see it's a lot softer in here. And with this filter, it really makes the details pop. Now, if you get to this point and you go, well, maybe I applied a little too much, you can always lower the opacity of that layer a little bit and just pull it back so that it's not so strong. Um, and we're going to do one more example, and then I'm going to show you how to mask it off a background, which you could also do in an image like this with a sky. So let me switch over here to this hummingbird. Now this has been edited, but not sharpened at this point. So I'm going to work with this layer. Again, I need to duplicate that layer. So I use Control-J. There's like four ways you can duplicate a layer, whichever you prefer. Um, we're going to apply our filter other high pass. And this is going to vary a little bit depending on your image and how much detail. So these details are a lot finer in the bird. So we're going to push this one a little bit more. So we're up about four. 
I'm going to actually come back low because I think that's going to be way too much up there. Let's come back to about 3.7 and I'm going to say OK. And then we're going to change our blending mode to the hard light. You could also, if hard light is too much, you can also try soft light and that will lessen the effect or lowering the opacity. So let's zoom in so we can see our little bird here. So here's our before. You can see it's a little soft on the feathers. And with this, it makes those details pop a whole lot more. Okay, but now that's starting to introduce a lot more noise to our background because we don't need to sharpen that background. We want to keep that nice soft background. So let's zoom out and you can see it also sharpened our flower really nicely. The before, the after brought out a little more detail in the petals. <clears throat> so we can use our quick selection tool and I'm going to try the select subject and see what that does to select our bird, see if it gets the flower too. I'm not sure if it will. Well, that didn't really get very much at all, did it? And that the reason that it has trouble like that is because the color of the bird around these edges is very similar to the background. So there's a couple ways we can do the selection instead. So I'm going to do a control D to deselect that. Um, because our background, even though it's got some colors, it's fairly consistent. I'm going to try the magic wand tool. And this is how you play around with selection. Sometimes it, you need to try different things. And I had the tolerance low for a project I was doing the other day. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to leave it there and see what that does. It may have issues still with that brown. So let's go up a little bit. Let's make it like 20 and try that. And what I'm going to do is click in a color. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. So here's a key. <laughs> Before you, when you, that's probably why I didn't select our bird because I was on the wrong layer. Um, so in order for it to actually read the uh, what we want to mask to select the subject, we have to click on our background layer. So let's try that magic wand again, or let's try the quick selection tool and the select subject and see if it does any better. So that's a good. Good reason I did that because I showed you what you shouldn't do. There we go. That made a little better selection. So, and I did get some of the flowers so we can add to our selection. So you want to go around and make sure that you've gotten all of the parts of the bird and missed a little bit down here. So I'm going to add a little to the selection and you can always adjust this too after you create the mask and that's why we're doing masking and not erasing. Back the very first time I tried this filter I looked at my old file of this bird and I erased what I didn't want. I'm like oh my that was before I learned the the benefits of masking I guess. So we all keep learning here. So let's so uh, so this might be a difficult one to select. Let's see if it'll find the edge. Yeah not too bad. And get the rest of that little bird. And let's come over to our flower. And to move this around like I am, when you're on any tool, if you hold down the space bar, it turns your cursor into the hand tool, and then you can click and move around. I find that much easier than using these sliders because you can go diagonally or any direction you want. So that's a, another little tip for you. So I'm just going to select the rest of this leaf and down here. That does a pretty good job. And we have our flower selected. And I'm not going to worry about that little bit right now in there. I think that will be fine. So. So now we have a selection, but the selection is our subjects, which are the parts that we actually want to apply the sharpening to. So I'm going to invert this selection so that it is the background that we have selected. So we're just going to go to select inverse. So now you can see by the marching ants around the edges that it's our background that is selected. So now we're going to click on that filter layer and then add our layer mask. And actually, I didn't have to invert it because it masked what I didn't have selected. So we can 
now either inverse this or we could go back and do it the other way. The mask actually, when you use this method, it's actually opposite of what you think it will do. So the selection is what it makes white so it will apply what's on this layer. So we actually want it to be masking the background and not the subjects. So you could just do a control I if you click on the mask, controller command I, and that will invert your mask. So now if we zoom in, and I turn that layer off. You can see it. the bird is soft because it's not on. And I turned it on, but now it's only applying it to the bird and the flower and not to our background. So we're keeping that nice soft background that we had there. And that's all there is to it. So the high pass filter is a great alternative if you don't want to use a plugin like, I, I prefer like Topaz Studio, the AI Clear filter. Uh, but if you don't have any of those or Luminar, or um, Nick or any of that that have sharpening features, this is a great way to do it right here in Photoshop with what you already have. We'll talk to you soon.